Hey, good morning, everybody. Good morning. Uh, we are, are uh, continuing our series on the Bema Seat. And if you have your Bibles, if you could turn to uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, we're going to read that passage together. Paul is speaking to the church at Corinth. He's teaching them about ministry, about investing one's life. And this is what he says. By the grace God has given me, I laid a foundation as an expert builder. And someone else is building on it. But each one should be careful how he builds. For no one can lay a foundation other than the one that's already laid, which is Jesus Christ. If any man builds on this foundation using good, gold, silver, costly stones, wood, hay, or straw, his work will be shown for what it is, because the day will bring it to light. If you mark in your Bible, circle those two words, the day. Uh, the Bema seat, the, 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 the day in which all of us will stand before Jesus and give account for how we've lived as believers. Here's what it says. <clears throat> it will be revealed with fire, and the fire will test the quality of each man's work. If what he has built survives, he will receive his reward. If it is burned up, he will suffer loss, but he himself will be saved. So that's not a question at the beam seat. It's not a salvation issue. And the verse finishes up, but only as one escaping through the flames. Well, the question is, what will that day look like? Uh, we've been uh, presenting you a drama over the last week and now this week of what that day might look like. And uh, so if you uh, are a little confused right now because you weren't here last week, uh, or if you just need a little refresher course, uh, you can watch the screens. We're calling it Last Week on the Bema. This morning, we are going to talk about stewardship. It is living for the day instead of living for today. Good morning, Mr. Matthewson. Oh, yeah, that's my name. Daniel Scott Matthewson. So I head down to my car and I'm driving to my favorite restaurant for lunch and sitting in traffic. I'm minding my own business. And that's when it happens. Jesus came back. I couldn't get over the feeling that there was still someone there. And so finally I said, hey, is there anyone there? Is there anyone out there? And whoosh, there was. There was. I'm a heavenly messenger. Oh, it's nice to meet you. I've, I've never met an angel before. He said, didn't anyone ever teach you about the Bema? I said, the what? He said, the Bema. You know, the place where every Christian will stand before to give account for how they've lived. He said, all right. All right, my bride. It's time for the judgment. You're not a criminal on trial. Your sins have been forgiven. And they will not appear before me today. My blood has covered them. All of you will be glorified today. <laughs> Glorification. That wonderful culmination of the salvation process that began when the Holy Spirit first drew you to me. Timulus. Jeremiaticus. He fell on his face before his Savior. And Jesus, full of compassion, got up off his throne and went to him and picked him up by the hands and went around beside him. He gave him the crown of righteousness, the crown of glory, the crown of life, and the crown of faith. He got all four. And he looked at him in the eyes and he said, Timulus, well done, my good and faithful servant. Be glorified. And in an instant, he was changed. Juanita, well done, my good and faithful servant. Be glorified. And she went back to her seat. And I thought, well, my turn's got to be coming soon. Daniel Scott Matthewson. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. 
Oh. Ariel dropped me off right at the bottom of the steps that led to the platform. As I climbed the steps, I couldn't help but think that the entire history of the Christian church was staring at the back of my head. But that, that was irrelevant because in, in front of me on his throne sat Jesus himself. I got to the top of the platform and I stood there just teetering on the edge. And Jesus said, Daniel, come closer. We had a conversation. It was a conversation I had seen take place millions of times with people before me. But now I knew the content of that conversation. He said, Daniel, I want you to fully understand this judgment before we start. You, you need to know the purpose of this judgment. It's not to deal with your sins. Your sins have been dealt with. You know that, don't you? Uh, yeah, I, I do. My, my blood has covered your sins, and they will not be appearing before me here today. <laughs> this judgment has nothing to do with your sin. This judgment is about your stewardship. What you did with the things I entrusted to you for me, for my purposes. Daniel, you were given 38 years of life. I'm going to look at what you did with that time. You were given financial resources. You were given spiritual gifts. Two, actually. You were given the gift of teaching and, and the gift of encouragement. I'm going to look at how you used those gifts to build into my church. You were given talents and treasures and a family, a background, and a heritage. And I'm going to put all of those things together and we're going to look at what you did with them for my kingdom, for me. Do you understand? I said, yeah, I, I, I understand. He said, Daniel, a lot of times when people get to this point, they ask me questions. And one of them I hear all the time is this. Why, why did you wait until today here at the judgment to reward us? I mean, why didn't you ever give us rewards on earth? And my answer to that is this. I did. You, you were just too busy to notice. Or worse yet, you attributed them to your own efforts and you missed them altogether. But the main reason that we wait until this day to give out a majority of the rewards is because the full impact of your activity isn't known until this day. You see, Daniel, when you impact someone's life and then they go and impact someone's life and then they go and impact someone else's life, well, it's like a web going out. And you will receive credit for those things all the way down the line here at the Bema. Wow. I mean, as he was telling me this, I couldn't help but think of D.L. Moody, a man who had lived about 100 years before me and whose judgment had been just before mine. D.L. was an evangelist and he had led lots of people to, to Jesus and he had received credit for those things. But he had also started a, a Bible study that, that turned into a small school that turned into a large school called Moody Bible Institute. And I watched in amazement as he received reward for the people that were trained there and as they went and impacted others. And I, I thought of my pastor back in Brandon. He and his wife had gone to Moody and been trained, and they had come to my church and impacted people for Jesus. And as a result, some of the people in my church had gone out and impacted other people for Jesus. And Moody received credit for that all the way down the line, years after he had died. 